Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Anil Joshi. Welcomes you to my series Learn Radiology with Dr. Anil Joshi. Today's topic is MRI physics that is also concerned with the MRI departmental machine room design that is main important fact is the RF shielding. MRI room the most important room is magnet room in that most important is RF shielding. We are going to see today how it is made, what are the components, what are the metals available to make it and how to know whether the RF shielding is done properly or not. For that let us get going to the lecture. To start with are the disclaimers. Most of the material in this uh, lecture is from our departmental day to day working. However, some of it we have downloaded from net, but we have confirmed that it is royalty free. We acknowledge with thanks all these people and we start our lecture on the topic that is the RF shielding which everybody should know there are certain facts in it and we are going to see today in this lecture in very brief form. Now, where RF shielding is required? The RF sh uh, shielded, the RF shielding is required for a room where the magnet is kept. So, what is important in this room are the walls, then doors, then uh, electrical filters and also a power supply because the power supply if it is not done properly it will cause a artifact in the MRI. The Mechanical partitions are also important, they should be waterproof, there should not be water leaking inside and that can be done often with a uh, waterproof material, then there are air vents. Now, what for air vents are? Sometimes they are used for the ducting AC, here we, what we need is a ductable AC, there are no AC units inside MRI room. So, a AC vent, then uh, this sprinklers for fire protection sometime are kept inside or they are sometime outside the MRI, MRI RF cabin. Now, these protections are required. The requirement is mainly to reduce the noise from outside as well as the noise from inside going outside. So, it has to work by way. Now, what is RF shielding material? Do any material work? Now, here we know that MRI work on a magnetic property of material. So, material should not be a magnetic material. Now, RF shielding is accomplished by installing barriers around potential sources and victims of the electromagnetic fields. Now, what are the potential sources of electromagnetic field? It can be a lift, it can be a generator or it can be electrical motors. So, you have to be, you have to have a barrier between them. Now, RF shielding material must have a high conductivity and magnetic permeability. So, it is very important. The common material for RF shielding use is the copper, aluminium, nickel, silver and pre-tin plated sheets. Now, it is obvious that you will see from here the easy level, level then economical are the pre-tin plated steel. However, most of the time we use copper because of its better conducting capacity number one and a thin sheet of copper suffices. So, that is why a copper shielding is preferred and another most important thing is it can be recycled. So, at the end of uh, the life of uh, MRI cabin you can put it in a scrap. So, radio frequency shield helps to protect electronic and computer devices from the radio frequency interference issues that can be affect the performance and function. We are going to see at the end of lecture how it causes artifact and how to detect them and get rid of them. Now, radio frequency shielding is also known as radiation shielding, but radio frequency shielding is the correct word. Now, radio frequency shielding of MR scanner is mandatory and serves two functions to prevent extraneous electromagnetic radiation from contaminating or distorting the MRI signals and two, to prevent electromagnetic radiation generated by MR scanner from causing interference in the nearby medical devices. So, you will have a ICU around or you will have your own equipment, they need to be outside the cabin and they need to be protected. So, all these things are the main functions of this RF shielding. 
Now, the most common form of RF interference comes from noise generated by nearby electronic equipment such as transformers, then motors, pumps and electronic devices such as computers, pulse oximeter and cardiac monitors. You must be aware that even the electrification you have done inside the RF cabin, if it is not proper, that can also give a noise. So, you have to be very specific about selecting whatever is inside RF cabin should not cause interference in the signals or should not cause a magnetic effect. As a rule, most manufacturers require that the magnetic, that the magnet room to have at least 100 decibel or RF attenuation at the Lormer's frequency. Now, what is Lormer's frequency? We have seen in some other lecture. Do visit our website for that. You will get details of that also. Now, specialized construction firms such as ETS or uh, these are different type of companies which can provide you a consultation for MRI cabin. But most of the machine manufacturers have got their own and they are usually they designing the room, they will check it and they will see that it is without any noises. The ideal room consists of three nest components that is an outer shell or structure support, number two a middle metallic RF shield and three interior layer made up of finished material. Now, here also we have to take care that they should not cause any interference with magnetic signals. The RF shield must include the entire room that is wall, floor and the ceilings. Such a conductive box used to shield out uh, stray electromagnetic interferences is also known as Faraday cage. Now, we are going to see what is this Faraday cage, how it is designed and how we are going to use it. Now, virtually any type of metal can be used including aluminum and galvanized steel. But here we have to see which is the best material number one, which is the easily available and which has got a scrap value. Now, here we are seeing a RF cabin. You are seeing a magnet inside and outside you are seeing a shielding. There is a door also. Now, I told you a window is mainly for a operator to watch patients number one and number two a small vent for tubings like suction oxygenation if there is no provision for central these facilities. If hospital has got centralized facilities then no you do not require all these things. The floor is generally made up of monolithic copper covered over with a solid anti-static flooring material. Usually it is a PVC material which is used and it works wonder, it works good. The interior walls are typically finished with drywall. The ceiling is suspended from the RF shield to allow space for resonance lights and other aesthetic senses. So, they are also need to be taken, MRI, look, MRI room look, should look a nice one, pleasant for the patients. The door must not allow any RF leakage. Now, this is the most common site because that is the most extensively used. Now, the door must not allow any RF leakage being sealed by a set of electrical control strips or a continuous metallic pneumatic tubes. So, these are available in the market, these need to be changed, they need to be checked because of repetitive opening and closing. RF seal around the door are frequently damaged and a common source of RF leakage is this in most of the MRI department. So, you if you find these type of artifacts, better take the preventive measure as we have already discussed. Now, windows are laminated with black and copper mesh between two pieces of glass that connects peripherally with the RF enclosure wall. So, it has to have a permeability, a doctor has to see what is going on with the patient. Additionally, there are closed circuit cameras in most of the units, they serve a good purpose because within the tunnel also what patient is doing can easily be seen around the console. However, the most of the RF enclosure consists of wood panels wrapped with copper that is the most popular method. At the range of frequencies used for MRI, the skin conductive depth for copper is a very small that is in order of 0.1 mm that is required. 
meaning that only a thin layer of metallic shielding is required. So, if you use copper, you need a thin sheet. Though it is expensive, here the point is different because you need less material. Now, nickel silver, the nickel silver is actually a copper alloy uh, and copper. Then is the copper works well with RF shielding because it naturally acts as an effective conductor absorbs and attenuates of the RF signal. So, first it absorbs and then it attenuates. So, there will not be any passage of the, uh, the signals from the machine outside or outside to inside. Now, steel, aluminum and elastomers filled with conductive material are the some of the other alt alternatives. Now, best material for RF shielding is copper. Copper is one of the most effective material used in RF shielding. While copper can be relatively expensive, it provides highly effective because it absorbs also and inactivates also because it's, it has got a unique property of, of good absorption and good attenuation. That is why it is always preferred and it is the choice of the most of the ca RF cabins. Here you are seeing, but what you are seeing shining is the copper. So, copper plates are perfectly outlining the wall. You will not see any gaps in between and e even the nails you use should not be off. Uh, anything else than copper. So, copper nails are available, you will have to use them to fix the copper. So, first it is important to hire an expert to perform an inspection and professional evaluation of the equipment room before installation because once installation is done, the things to alter will be a uh, difficult. But equally important is your designing is different and actual First, you have to put the magnet in the room and then only the RF cabin is constructed. So, practically except one wall, all walls are constructed before, all RF protection is done before and through the one opening, the machine or magnet is pushed inside. It is a very heavy, the approximate weight of 1.5 T is around 5 to 6 tons and that of the 3 T is 7.5 to 8 tons. So, different models, different companies will have different weight of the total magnet. So, base has to be made accordingly. Now, what expert will do? They will able to identify any vibration or RF issues and provide a plan to shield the room including wall floor, ceiling and even the electrical circuit. As far as possible, this is avoided. However, sometime it is not possible. In that condition, we will go for a secondary shielding. Now, how secondary shielding is done? There are certain materials available which we will be discussing again in this lecture. Do hear it. It is given at the end of lecture. Now, even one small puncture of or opening can cause artifacts on MRI. So, you have to be very careful as far as any uh, permeability of passage of any RF signal from outside to inside and also inside to outside. Then depending on the conductor, it takes approximately 6 to 10 days for proper copper shielding. In that in between, you have to put the machine in. So, practically it is a lengthy process. Though galvanized sheets, it can be faster, but please note copper does a better job than galvanized sheets because it has good absorption capacity and attenuation potential. Now, the bottom line, the copper and galvanized steel are good options for use of RF shielding regarding one of you choosing, you can use any of them, but please make sure that they are tested for the performance that the installation engineer has got with them by which they can measure it whether there are any signals passing through. With the proper maintenance, both can protect your MRI and work well. However, we have told you which is a better one. Now, recycling is one of the best advantage of the copper. Sheets of galvanized sheets that have been screwed together can be used again at another location. Even that is with the copper shielding that also can be used at some other center. However, it will need to be fit exactly specification in order to deliver a perfect fit. 
both RF cabin, your new one and the old one, unless they are of same dimension, it should not be done. Then RF shielding made up of copper can be moved once the seams are soldered together. However, the copper can be recycled to cover same of the cost. So, you can recover the cost, not that the old one you have to use, but you can give back the old one and get a new one and there will be a marginal difference, which is okay. Now, RF shielding and magnetic shielding, you can see here how many layers are there, which three layers which we had discussed at the beginning of lecture, then see the flooring, that also we had discussed at the beginning of lecture, see the door, how it is shielded. So, these are things you must know before starting MRI. Now, alternative types of RF material which I told you, it is not done as a primary shielding, but it can be done for reinforcement. Now, shields such as fabrics are available as woven, knitted and non-woven fabrics. They are not as efficient as the copper shielding, but to some extent they suffices particularly for secondary shielding. The conductive fabrics are mainly used for shielding of electromagnetic radiation in the frequency range of 0.2 gigahertz or 14 megahertz. So, gigahertz, it is the low magnetic field against which it is effective. So, if your magnet is of high capacity, then please do not use it unless you are using it for somewhere as a secondary shielding. Mainly used for shielding of electromagnetic that we had told you just now. Now, due to their low weight, the conductive fabrics are used as EMC shielding fib fabric in various technical products. But our main aim is not that even woven are available. Now, these are different type of sheets, but we do recommend they are not as a primary shielding, but they can be used as secondary shielding, particularly if you want to protect certain equipments. And there are also non-woven available and they can also be used. Now, these three, all the fabrics which we are telling just now are not for primary protection. They are meant for secondary protection. Now, how you know that whatever shielding you have done, so much efforts you have taken, so many experts you have called, so much efforts you have to put is perfect or not will be told by MRI with your first scan. Now, what are the artifacts caused due to defective RF cabin? These are called as zipper artifact because the bands are like zipper. So, zipper like bands of uh, spurious signals passing through the larger results image result from a variety of causes. So, one of the major cause is RF cabin and leakage from the either door or otherwise. The most common of the zipper artifact process through the center of the image and oriented in the phase encoding direction. So, with that you know if the artifacts are originating from the center, if they are oriented in the direction of phase coding, then you know they are zippers artifact. This type of zipper artifact result from varying transmitter leakages, but be sure they can be correctable and need, needs to be corrected. With that, we are coming to end of lecture. I thank you for giving me your valuable time. Please visit our website for comprehensive details. There are different type of lecture, different mode of presentation and also lot of educational material on our YouTube channel as well as on my website. Thank you, goodbye and take care.